So you followed Connor's career for a bit now. Um, as you can see here in studio, we've got a few of his pieces out that are gifts that were given to you. We yeah. got some of his whiskey there. We got one of his gloves signed, by the way. And then, of yeah. course, you got little Connor there as the, uh, the the little mini guy there. Got so, his whiskey. Yeah. yeah, empty, of course, because we don't want that. Yeah, we finished it before we, we started. Yeah, we don't want to break drink that out. Of the air, it's, so. little, it's a little early here, but hey, why not? Any Anytime's a good time for whiskey, especially proper 12. So you followed him for a bit now. I guess what my my thinking is about bringing this episode to the masses is, you know, first of all, how do you feel about his performance outside the ring? I feel like now he's, he's more known for what goes on outside of it than what goes on inside of yeah. it. So what is your takeaway there? I think it's fantastic. He's a fantastic marketer. He's promoter, a, right? Yeah, he's a promoter. Yeah. He's a marketer. Um, he sells himself constantly. And see, this is, this is and we, you and I talked about this off air a little bit. Yeah. One of the interesting things about him is that he understands that there is no negative attention, right? Attention is attention. To keep your name relevant, to keep it out there. I mean, you don't want it all negative, obviously. Yeah. And his isn't all. He has his share. Uh, he definitely gets his share of, of criticism. Um, but the guy has somewhere along the line, and I'm not exactly sure where this kicked in for him, um, but the idea was that he understood that being out there all the time, everywhere was the was the deal. Like that's the deal. Sure, everywhere so, all the time. Yeah. Sure. So so here's so here's so let's just let's just put this out on the table, right? Let's, yeah. Let's because let's remove the illusion. The guy's a businessman. Totally. Right. He's a fighter. He's yeah. a great fighter. He may be considered one of the best. Like I'm not. Sure. You know. I mean, just that's just some what I hear. I don't think he's the best. But he may be. But he's in the conversation. He's in the conversation, right? But what people don't, what's not in the conversation, is the guy's a brilliant businessman. He's there to fucking make money. He's there to build a legacy for himself. Whether he goes down as one of the greatest fighters in histories or or not, I mean, it's he's probably thinking, who cares? Doesn't matter. I'm making it rain. Yeah, make it rain. (laughs) Make it rain. And I'm sure D's happy as shit, and the kids are happy as shit, and. He is also a very positive statement coming out of Ireland. Um, you know, you don't see that come out of Ireland. I mean, Ireland is such a fantastic country. The, the more positive that comes out of Ireland over the years, I think, the great. It's just, it's just, and he knows that. He's a proud Irishman sure. also. He knows the history of what he grew up in, you know, and with the, with the country being divided. You know, I mean, we grew up with that country being at war yeah. with each other, you know, and, and, and um, he's a great guy. He's a, and I've never met him. I've, I've, I mean, I don't know him personally. I'm just telling you what my observation is. And here's something else that I know about Connor. Connor, I relate to him probably more from the aspect of the business part I mean, I love the fighting, right? I love. Sure. I mean, I. It's a good watch. It's entertaining. It's a, it's a great watch. I was, I was a Frazier fan and Ali. Yeah. And like, all, I mean, I always liked that stuff. I'm not a religious watcher. I'm not going to watch every damn fight. I like the big fights, mm-hmm. right? But I also, I won't watch football all year. But I will watch the Super Bowl. You know me. Like oh, we totally. have a party every year. Yeah, we have an amazing absolutely. F- a Super Bowl party. The big ones. I'll watch the World Series, right? You know, I'll watch. You know the the Stanley Cup. I'm, I'll watch that stuff. I don't want to watch all the other the other stuff. I'm not into sports that much. I'm into winning. Yeah, you're right? in greatness. I'm into winning. I'm into greatness. I yeah. you know d- with the only exception to that was when Jordan played. Yes, I would stop what I was doing to watch Jordan. That play. was appointment television. <laughs> when yes. he, whenever then, he was and on then court. a little bit with Kobe, not as much because I was much busier when sure. Kobe was playing and I was a kid. I mean, Jordan and I are basically the same age. Right. I mean, he's only a couple of years older than me. Um, so it was, it was, it was a very interesting thing, but with Connor, there's this other part that we have in common, which is the searcher part. He, one of the things that changed his life and he talks about it, I don't know how much he's talking about it right now, but he did a few years ago was the secret. The secret completely changed Mm. his fucking life. He built everything that he did on the belief of understanding the secret. And a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, you know? I didn't. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. If you look on YouTube, there's actually a couple hours of him talking about it. Really? Oh okay. yeah. Oh, so yes. he's he's aware. Like he's oh, in, he very, knows this sphere that very, you work in. Very, 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 very. The Absolutely. secret came into his life, and it completely changed his outlook on where he was going. Wow. Now, where the business part came in, 
who his business influence was, who taught him there, I don't know. We don't know that yet. I don't know. I don't know that yet. Um, I know that he hooked up. Robbins got in there a little bit later on. I don't know if they're still doing their thing. Um, but he was well. I mean, Robbins can't take credit for this guy's success. Sure. Right. Robbins has done a lot for a lot of people, but yeah. he is, can't take credit for this guy's success. He came in much later in the game. So who his business acumen came from where he picked that up i don't know but but he but i'm the person that is like tell tell people like stop right so the, the, and you even said it the, he threw the ball who do you know where the fuck oh, ball went yeah. into like um yeah. we'll you know, get into that like in a foul bit. ball he threw, <laughs> yeah. he threw yeah. a foul exactly. ball right? exactly but that's going to get played everywhere versus like if he threw one right down center right you know, like who cares if he threw one right down center? Everybody would expect him to throw one right down center, not t- toss it over into the hot dog stand, yeah, which is what yeah. he did. So everything is is orchestrated in a way. I mean, yeah. for business people like this, and it's, I'm glad that you bring up the business side because that's, you know, we talk about the successful mind here. We're not specifically talking always about business. That's what these Full Throttle Thursday episodes are about. But when you think about someone like a fighter, if you go down the lineage and you go down the list, Ali was a businessman. Even back then, he was into self-promotion. He was the well, biggest that part is and the totally. baddest. That's where he models 100%. that from. The Ali. The Ali. Even when you go into t- Tyson. Tyson. Tyson was just this kid from the streets who ended up having a lethal freaking right and left hand and he promoted and he the bites. shit out of himself and he bites. He bites. <laughs> and, and we still talk about that to this <laughs> right, day. That's it's, it's the moment yeah. where you're like in the heat of battle, he's a freaking tiger, he's yeah. going after you. So these people, especially those in the MMA, they are masters at their brand yeah. and promoting their brand. And you see it all the time and now it's expected before when they would square off during the weigh in and get nose to nose. It used to be a civil affair. Now, if punches aren't thrown or pushes aren't happening or if the camps yeah. aren't coming together, then it's not going to be played over and over again. And right. I'm sure that, you know, Dana White behind the scenes is just like, okay, you need to do this, you need to do that. Everything is orchestrated because in order to stay relevant, the MMA has had to do that. And it's really cool to see yeah. Connor do that. And Dana also has to play the Dana White role like you know there has to be some decorum and you know and all this and then Connor throws you know a chair through a bus window or whatever the (laughs) fuck it was that he threw you know and then Dana's like yeah, he, you know he's you know I he's mean, saying this thing over he, here like you know what we can't be doing that I might suspend you but on the other side he's like man you guys are we cannot it. you cannot deny and Rogan talks about this quite yeah. a bit also that. If you take the UFC, nobody knew the UFC was going to be what it is today. But the 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 fantasticness of it was modeled off of the WWS. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, WWF, WWE. WWE. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was. It, I mean, when 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 we looked at wrestling, and everybody knew wrestling was bullshit. That it was it was theatrics. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what if you took those theatrics and you put it with something that was a real contest, sure. right? Where it wasn't just an athletic. It wasn't. It I wasn't mean, predetermined. It, these are, those are athletic guys. There's oh, no absolutely. question. Absolutely. But they're, you know, it. This is not. This is not what we. This is not the fighting that we see today. Right. Right. It's not. It's not. So if you take the theatrics of that, you take you take the the shit talking of Ali mm-hmm. and you put that into some people that have some charisma in 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 the, in the, in UFC fighting you've got like one of the biggest industries on the planet yeah you know you've got it, it is it is contagious for everybody that wants to see it Connor happens to also be a good looking guy. Mm-hmm. He's a dandy, like he's a clothes horse. Yes. Like get he the is, fuck he's out. He's got style. He d- yeah, he does. He's got he, and and he's got the physique to carry mm-hmm. it. And he's like he's embodied it in his walk, in his gestures, yeah. in everything that he does. He is a marketing genius. He's it, it is it is saying pay attention to me without saying pay attention to me because it actually looks like oh he's just being a dick again or or he's doing this. But that's the whole idea. The whole idea is eyeballs, 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 eyeballs. Yeah. You know, if you didn't even follow UFC, you probably know Connor's name. Which is very interesting because you're right. There's people probably listening to this or watching this right now that are saying, I have no idea uh, much about this UFC right. you're talking about, but right. I do know the name 
Conor McGregor. Right. And it's, I mean, that just goes to show you that he is a relevant person, even though, you know, he's, th- these guys only fight like 22 times, 23 times in their career. I mean, the ones that are the big ones sanctioned, right? Yeah, yeah. But who knows um, how many more he'll have. But the reality of the situation is that we talk about him because he does no ways to keep relevant, stay yeah, top of yeah, mind. Yeah. And that was the whole, you know, throwing out the the pitch at the Cubs game, you know, a, a week or two ago where he was. He's thro- in my hometown, he motherfucker. Was in, I know he was in your hometown. He should have popped down and said hello to us down here. We'd love to I have him I could take him out for a dog. Absolutely. There you right? go. Well, he... I think he was heading that way as he threw that pitch. Because I, I seriously think for, he was. For those people that haven't seen it, go and just go on YouTube and, and watch him throw this pitch. There was this moment where I said to myself, is this orchestrated or is he really that bad at throwing a ball? I mean, this is one of the guys that has the most, he's got one of the most lethal, you know, friggin' hands, his left hands in the game. Yeah. Throwing a baseball as bad as he did. Did he throw he with did. his left hand? He did. He threw it. Put it on. Did he throw it? I can't remember. All I know is he almost hit somebody in the stands. Like, if, you, if you've been to a baseball park, you can see him throwing that ball right down the pipe. Can we put it on And the he field? didn't throw the pipe. He didn't throw it he threw it into the stands and that was insane to me but on the bright side his confidence can get him through any situation yeah. and I bet he loved seeing those clicks come through we can go ahead and take a look we'll see if we can pull this up on the screen here so you can get a look and see how bad this was like to me that tells me that that was a hundred percent I did yeah. I that is a hundred percent orchestrated yeah, in my opinion there's no way you can miss that badly I mean we've seen people flub it in the middle we've seen people overshoot the catcher yeah. but never to the point where well, you, you said that it. to me off air you, I said I said what do you think he was nervous I wasn't even thinking and you're like no I think he did it on purpose I'm like you fucking that's exactly I think that's Connor, Connor I mean Totally only on only this. Connor knows. But then, you know, to do that. So let me just say, I'm inviting Connor to come on the, the 100%. show. 100%. And let's let's talk about let's talk about his uh, his marketing yeah uh, well style. W- so that was one of the questions I was going to ask you. You know, if you had him on the show, like, yeah. what would you ask him? What are some things you'd the like fir- to know? I would first thing I would do is I would talk about him about how how he grew up and and how this whole idea of. Um, uh, the secret and all that kind of came into his life because he takes that shit serious. Like I don't really care what anybody else thinks. I was inside that stuff. I was there before the sure. secret. My mentor was Proctor was, was in the secret. He was like the main star yeah. in the secret. I was considered to be in it, but there was a little you know conflict thing. Yeah, yeah, going yeah, yeah. On. Sure, sure. Um, the 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 thing about this is 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 I would really love to know why that appealed to him. Uh, why it's meant so much to him, how he's applied it in his life. Because I would really like, I I would also like to see that message get out to other people. And and I know that in the beginning, he talked about it a lot. I don't see it much anymore, but you know, who knows? I mean, I I don't know what, what they're, the other thing is, is like, there's a lot of people like, oh, that's kind of fucking stupid shit, or that doesn't really yeah. work. And, and, and the truth is, is the secret was only this much of the understanding of what that, stuff is about it's it's you know it was very deceptive but even that book was designed to get people to read it Mm -hmm. it wasn't designed really to teach people everything about that that um that ideology you know that 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 information so i mean i understand that and then and ronda is a marketer too like she oh ronda rousey no 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 oh no oh ronda Ronda oh i was thinking yeah ronda yeah ronda rousey too but i'm talking about ronda bird yeah 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 who wrote the book? Like she did a genius job with that stuff. It's one. I wonder if I wonder if there was a moment where Connor, when he thought that that might be seemed as a weakness, because it was deemed for a while there as oh you, she made it believe that you could just think about something and shit happens. You could just you know just. I'm just going to think about this thing and I'm going to get it like that. There's right. more to it than that. And totally. you've even said a hundred times, right. like there's a lot of the stuff in the secret that is just blown way out of proportion. And that speaks to the marketing arm that you said Rhonda right. was. But I wonder if there was a moment in time where Connor started to distance himself from that. And instead of leading with that, he just kind of kept it in house and buried it underground. Like a lot of people tend to do when you get into personal development, professional development, because a lot of people want to be able to do it themselves. And the truth is, is you need to have someone guiding you on that path. Yeah. And you don't often go on Facebook and say, I'm working with this person. I'm working with this person. I know. There, if you look it up on your computer, there's there's a, like a 45 minute to an hour interview on YouTube with Connor talking about The Secret. Really? Yes. Interesting. Yes. I had no there's idea. There's a few of them, but out. there's one that's actually that long. It's like 45 minutes, I think. Okay. I'll find it and I'll link to it in the show notes so people can check that out. It's really interesting. I 
I, I'm getting blown away here. I had no idea oh, yeah. that, that was even a thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could kind of tell that these fighters, these gritty guys that come from the streets, they've got a little bit of that in them that, you know, uh, the secret or, you know, I've, I'm going to seek out a mentor to bring me to this next level. I guess I never really thought that, um, that Connor was one of them. Well, I, I so it was interesting because when he first started getting really big, people were asking him, like, how did you do this and all this? And he's like, you don't understand. I attract this stuff to me. Mm. Like, I attract it. Like, like I believe in all that stuff. I attract it. I, I build an image in my mind. And then he then he actually came out and said this. And I was like, get the fuck wow. out of here. Really? Yeah. This is like the first athlete that we've probably ever had talk about the metaphysical side of what they do. And I know that a lot of them do. Yeah. They just don't talk about it publicly about because it. they don't want to be looked like they're an idiot. But I yeah. mean, so many successful people do. Let's just say what it is. Oh, absolutely. But the fact that he came out and said it, I was like, no shit. And then I started watching. He did a few things, and then it kind of got. It, I, I I don't I don't even know that it was something that he stopped talking about as much as things just moved on in yeah. his career, you know. And he became bigger than life, and you know. Well, and I think athletes in general visualize. I mean, they all visualize something. They're visualizing as young children about winning the Super Bowl, or you know, you hear them after the fact talking about that yeah. and all the hard work that goes into it and putting, you know, putting your blood, sweat, and tears into this thing. I think it's really cool that he does bring that up. I'll definitely take a look at. Let's look at some of the things that he's done here. He's got this proper twelve whiskey that I mean, obviously he sold. I mean, like that's a, a brilliant. Yeah, he thing made it. He made some fat stacks there. He's definitely making a rain with that. He did, but. <laughs> He look what he did for Ireland too. Yeah. Like you know, he did a he did a really good whiskey. I mean, when was the last time Ireland had a really great whiskey come <laughs> right. out? Right. I right. mean, yeah, it, their 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 lineage is like hundreds of years old. Their whiskeys, yeah, yeah they haven't read. Yeah, so it was it was it was right, and it's a pretty damn good whiskey. Yeah, I mean, this bottle was pretty good. So <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the way of things, you know. You see another another person like Floyd Mayweather Jr., who actually Connor did fight in a boxing match to go yeah. toe to toe with one of the best pound for pound fighters ever no out of his lane. Even though he didn't win that fight, he proved to a lot of people right. that, I mean, if you this guy could accomplish pretty much anything because he has the drive, he has the metal to see it through, and it's really cool. My biggest concern is that all of this distraction outside of the ring is going to continue to take him down this road where he becomes like a, a sideshow performer. A but the thing about it, and you don't want to be a parody, but he's also getting clicks. He's also getting paid. He's also making money. So I just don't want to see the parody aspect of it. So, yeah. But sure. you don't know. I but mean, here, but, but, but hang on a second. Hang on a second. What's Connor's dream? True. What's Connor's <laughs> goal? <laughs> we project because a lot every, on every, every, Everything that is parody or judgment or like this guy's fucking crazy or, or whatever, there's there's dollars flowing into this guy's account oh, yeah. in huge freaking numbers. Oh sure. Right? He he is not an idiot, even though people would think he is because of the stuff that he's doing. They don't understand that it that it is done on purpose, yeah. right? In order to do whatever he's doing. He may never even admit that. I mean True. he might be like, no, it's just the way that I am. But look. When you're at that level, everything that you're doing is in the consideration of is this moving me forward or not. And he wants to be in the eye constantly, constantly, constantly part of the conversation. It doesn't matter because if the guy is as talented as he is, he comes back and he knocks somebody out with his fucking shoulder in six seconds. Yeah. And it's like, <clears throat> now what do you say? Or right. You could say he's an idiot all he want, but he just floored the yeah. cowboy. Yeah, he's like still. He, he broke his, op, you know, his 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 eyeball or whatever. Yeah. He's still one of the best that's he's ever one of the best. fought in UFC. And definitely as far as earning is concerned, the guy just gets pay-per-view buys like crazy. Yeah. And I think for people who know of Conor McGregor and would be saying like, Oh my God, I can't believe this guy. He's, he's not even worth the time we're giving him. I would encourage them to go watch the uh, Netflix documentary that they did. Um, it was called notorious. Yeah. That was um, what's that, 2017. Yeah. 2017. It really sheds some light into who Conor McGregor was as a human. There was a human side to it because, you know, these fights don't last very long, but the training that leads up to them and the amount of the of marketing and self-promotion and not even considering what they have to do in the gym and all these other things, it really does make you think a little bit differently about who Conor was because when you first came in and you were sharing Proper 12 and you had this, you know, this signed glove and this 
little Connor bobblehead yeah. that we have here. I was thinking, okay, this is interesting. David's not into sports. He's not into, you know, listening to any of this stuff going on. And now all of a sudden he's hitching his train to Connor McGregor. Why is that? Yeah. And his greatness. Yeah. And yeah. it was the greatness part. Yeah. And then you turned me on to watching this documentary and I started going down some, some YouTube I stuff and I'm like, it's one of my yeah, favorites. Yeah. It's really cool to see that there's a human side of these people that we oftentimes forget, especially in our athletes. These are our heroes. These are our role models. And also in the UFC game, there are, there's, there needs to be a villain, right? There needs to be someone who you taught me that. Yeah. There needs to be, and, and you go back to the WWF Even in days, the fit, like with the fans. Oh, like, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. The different camps. I remember when I was growing up watching WWF, I live for WWF. You had to have the good guy and the bad guy. You had to have the Hulk Hogan and you had to have the Andre, the giant, you had to have these people. And when they crossed over, you know, when Hulk Hogan dyed his beard black and he became a bad guy, you're like, what the hell? But then you still watch. I don't watch yeah. anymore, but you had to have a bad guy. And the thing is, is that the notorious documentary, Conor McGregor was going down a road for me where he was going to be the bad guy. He's just a mouthpiece. Yeah. You know, he hasn't won a lot of fights. He's really struggling. But then I watch his documentary and I think to myself, this guy's a good guy. Down deep, he's a good guy. And he's doing things for his community, for his people yeah. that people don't even know about because they want to put him up on this. Oh, he's just a bad, yeah, bad guy. Play Look the at role. him. Play the role. But you play the role in such a way. And it, it, it's just interesting to see. But I would encourage people to go watch Notorious. It was an amazing... And it came out in, in 2017, so a lot's happened in the four years since that came out. Yeah. I mean, so, crazy. So, so just in, in 2021, I just looked, I looked it up, his net worth is $200 million Yeah. right now. Right? $200 million. That's not... I mean, that's... You know, that's not all UFC money. Absolutely. Right? And it's not even probably taking in consideration the proper 12 sale because that in itself is probably not discussed. It's probably not talked about. You know what I mean? Which is so interesting because it was... I did read somewhere that he sold his stake for somewhere around six hundred million. Now, I don't know how much of that he got, but the dude knows how to earn. He knows how to promote, and I think what's really interesting about that is he just keeps staying yeah, relevant. Six hundred million just in keeps, April. yeah, just keeps <coughs> staying relevant. So it's really Proxima, cool to see. Uh, Proximo Spirits, twelve Irish whiskey. To he sold it to Proximo Spirits in a deal that's worth up to six hundred million. So it's probably over time. Yeah, you know, like just totally. Um. I just think what's yeah. interesting is over the course so over the course of the last, you know, 4 years, right? He has he's fought 4 times in the octagon. He's lost 3 of those fights. But those fights were some of the biggest pay-per-view buys ever <laughs> because when Connor's in the conversation, people want to watch. Yeah. And you know, you might have people tuning in to watch him get knocked out and you're going to have the other people who are turned tuned in to watch him fight. So, I think how we pull this back into the conversation of a successful mind is put yourself in his shoes and think a little bit about what does it take from his side of things to keep going. I mean, he's not a he's not an old guy by any stretch of right. the imagination, but there does come a point in time when he's going to have to move on. And you know, like you said at the beginning, all publicity is good publicity. Can his brand be affected by what goes on outside the ring, or can it only improve? It can only improve. Can only improve because it, it has nothing to do with the ring anymore. He, the ring is done. As long as he can stay relevant in the minds of people, it doesn't matter. But he also knows that generally that time is probably limited. But what happens is that you turn yourself into an icon like Ali, and Ali became relevant his entire life True. for many different things. You know, it wasn't just fighting. His philanthropy, his yeah, his, his political, political stance, beliefs, his philanthropy, right, his religious change. So let's look at this. Conor McGregor's net worth broken down. 32 years old, net worth $200 million. Source of wealth, MMA, boxing, endorsements, whiskey distillery business, menswear, sports management. Salary from 2020 to 2021 is $37 million. Okay. Endorsements, $16 million. This is from 2020 to 2021. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Residents, Dublin, Las Vegas, and Marabella, right? Can't argue with them there. Uh, sponsors, e, uh, Electronic Arts, Reebok, Wynn Resorts, Beats by Dre, Monster Energy, Burger King, um, TIDL, Sports, and McGregor FAST, right? So th this is just something that he continues to build on. This is so – but here's the thing. In here, the whiskey distillery business is is considered in that. But his salary is $37 million. Yeah. His salary is $37 million, right? So – the idea is that 
anything that he that makes sense for him to touch will i mean the guy he will be a billionaire there's sure. unless he does something outrageously stupid crosses a line you know somewhere. well yeah so like outrageously stupid would be that he killed somebody or he beat up his wife or something that where he literally turned everybody against him um he could make almost any mistake possible which he has yeah and the people are going to still love him he will be a billionaire i mean he he will be he will be a jordan he'll be he'll he'll be an ali he'll be at that he'll be at that level There's yeah no and what's question. interesting is if you go back to the time you know of ali when he was first starting out there was no path that was guaranteed where he was going to be an icon like he was going to be an he icon in the to, fight game well, but when he <clears throat> when when he when he went from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali what, and all these other things. But when he when he went to jail for not going in yeah. the, in into a Vietnam. Right. Right? When he said, I'm not doing it. This right. is craziness. Right? Think about how much of America, you know, America was very divided then. Sure. Right? But you think about the people that really loved the boxing at that age. Those were probably pro non people, most mm, of them. Sure. You know? Um, I don't know what the number breakdown is, but he stood he, he had balls he stood for what he actually believed in and he didn't back down and even if you're a person that disagrees with what it is you have to admire the fact that the guy would stand up for something like that yeah and he and he did and he put everything at risk and he took had to take all that time off he, he went to jail all these sorts of he things did. And he came back from it. And your statement that there's no guarantee or that you could even dream where he was heading is yeah. 100% true yeah but he was being the person that he knew he could be. True. That's what I think. Yeah. No, I think I think it's really it's really interesting. And as long as you know Connor continues to uh, do what he does and does well in promotion and doesn't mess up too much. I mean, he has had some interesting things happen over the course of the last few years. There's been some allegations alleged. There like was what? Um, what sexual sexual assault allegations that that were brought down on him. He what? There was no. They couldn't bring it to court because there wasn't any proof. When you're a big. What he um, hit on somebody is that? What well, it, it's it's hard to like, say. Seriously, that yeah. we're gonna play that. Game with Hard to say. Like this, yeah, I mean right? that, but that's that's what happens with these celebs, right? They people come after them. They try to do whatever they can to get in the door. There was a pub assault. He beat the tar out of some guy outside of a pub in Dublin. I mean, that's he was just also the one guys where they being got him guys. On the iPhone hitting, hitting some guy. Yeah, know? yeah. So he does have. There is some. There is some things there. that are happening. So you don't know if I don't know if it's a CTE thing. It's too hard, too early to say. You know, he has been hit in the head multiple times, but he does have a good business sense. So it'll be interesting to see how he continues to carry that yeah. moving forward. You just I don't would, know. I would disagree with the CT thing. So here's what I know. Because I have this personality myself. I'm an extremist. Extremists go over the edge in the wrong way sometimes. Sure. It's it's just part of our personality. And I think what I know about it, and the more I know about me, the more I can kind of see it. If you're not getting that expressed in a healthy way, there's a very reasonable chance you'll express it in an unhealthy way, not really on purpose, but just by getting sucked into you need to express more than you're thinking about what you're expressing it. In. Yeah. I was terrible at that when I was young. I've matured a lot since. Although I've done some things that are like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to express it in a you got to express yeah. it in it some way. It you has do. to be it expressed some way. You have to. Yeah. You have to. Well, I was talking with Steph about this the other day. I said, "Steph, I'm never not going to be that person. I just have to make sure that I direct it consciously in productive ways that are good for everybody and not something that's destructive." And I'll tell you what's been a challenge for me has been the whole COVID thing because the COVID thing in a way is kind of like we're all under this. We can't do anything. I'm not doing the things that I normally would do. We travel all over the right. world together. We go to amazing restaurants. We go to amazing theater. We go to amazing concerts. We're out in our boats. We're out on our jet skis. We're doing all these things that we normally do. And for the last 18 months, we haven't done shit. It's true. And it's kind of like if I don't, start proactively doing something different, I'm going to start doing things that are negative, right? And and only because I need to do something. Yeah. I need to do something that's on the edge for for me. So I have to be aware of that so I don't get myself that's true. In, in trouble. Yeah, I mean- and I, I think Connor's the same way. 
Yeah. I think he's the same way. Yeah. I don't think that he's really kind of got. He probably has. A, he probably has a temper. The guy's a fighter for God's sake. He is. He right? has to have a temper. It's his edge. It's it's yeah. who he is yes. as a human being. Yes. Absolutely. Um. Yeah. And I I'm I'm not trying to to throw CTE on him or anything like that. But it is. It'll be interesting to see how as he ages. Well, what are the like in in your understanding of that like with football players and stuff? What normally happens to those guys when it starts acting up? I think they they get completely to the point where they well it all depends they can get suicidal they can take their own life they can really lose their shit and beat their you know significant others i mean they just they're not they're in their insane. right like mind they, they go insane yeah, yeah. They they they're not like in their right mind break, right? Yeah, yeah yeah so you start to see these things and you say well maybe he's got some of that but we don't know i mean the only way to know is through brain scans or after the fact post-mortem when they cut up the brain and they look at all those dead spots yeah we don't know he's he's fought Quite Who a few was the fights. Real big guy that they did the that did the um, the documentary on the football player. Um, what oh was man, his name? I don't know. There's been so many. I don't have it off the top of my head, but I do know that there was a guy from the I want to say from the Chicago Bears. It was uh, Dave Dewerson, I believe, was the gentleman's name. Who they and I'll fact check it here, but that they they went in and looked and oh, and Junior Seau was another one too. Yeah. he took his own life. Yeah. He shot him. He shot himself specifically in the chest. Yeah. So that his brain would be okay yes. to be studied, and they did yes. find CTE there. Not to say that all fighters are going to get that, but it'll be interesting to see as Connor ages and progresses if if his if his antics escalate to escalate. the point where oh my god, this is this is crazy, yeah. something's wrong. But he, you know, he's fought quite a few times, but he doesn't get hit that much because some yeah. of his fights are really relatively short because he is that lethal. So well, the other thing is this: there's also a maturity factor. So let's That's let's true. take the disease out for a moment. If he doesn't. Because he's going to get to the point where it doesn't make sense for him to fight. but he's, So he's going to have to transform that energy into something that can be just as wild, but it has to be productive. Right. Otherwise, he will end up beating people up in a bar. Yeah. He will end up hurting somebody he loves. Because you transfer – I mean, that part's not going to change. That's what we know. It's how we direct it that has to be – that's the conscious part. And he's a conscious guy. That's why I'd love to have him on the show. I think yeah. he'd be a great, great yeah. guest. So, Connor, we're coming for you. We're we coming want for you on the you. show. That's right. I mean, we're come on. We'd you. love to have you here. He would be a fascinating study of just get him in here. You want to talk about movers and shakers. That guy, I mean so, – So, Connor, I got a business proposition for you. You want to take what you understand and what I understand to another level as far as consciousness goes. You are the guy. Right? Come talk to me. Let's see what we can do. There it is. That's a wrap for this one. Thanks, Dave. You bet. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Full Throttle Thursday. If you like this episode, leave us a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe and ring that bell. A lot of people watch these videos, but they aren't subscribers. We definitely want you on our team. Be sure to subscribe, ring that bell, and we'll see you on the next Full Throttle Thursday.